Uh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Trying to discuss a pretty random tutorial, but uh, it's pretty useful. Uh, basically, it's a review of the NHL or the National Hockey League's plus minus stat. Basically, go over how it good it, it basically how good is it or how good it is, and then basically I'll conclude that it's a bad stat later on. I'll get to that in a bit. Basically, it's pretty interesting um, review here. Basically, before I get to the recap here of the plus minus. From Wikipedia, if you just go read it, it just says measures the impact on their team's total scoring versus their opponent's total scoring while a player is on the ice, while excluding power play goals for and penalty shot goals. Basically, a uh, basic breakdown, it means if you have if it's even strength goals or shorthanded goals, all pl players on the ice get a plus one if on scoring team and a minus one if on the team scored against. You get a plus one if an even strength goal or shorthanded goal but then yeah minus one if you get scored on the power play or you get scored on even strength so the current usage and, and implications is basically used to tell if a player is a good two-way player meaning he plays well offensively and defensively defensively but how reliable is this uh, and uh, basically uh, I'll go over this by by looking at the top and worst plus minus in the league as of um, I think March 31st when this video is made. Basically, current max and minimum uh, plus minus leaders are basically David Krejci from Boston Bruins. He has the best plus minus at plus 37, and Ovechkin has the worst plus minus in this season right now at minus 34. So, what does this say about the best and worst plus minus? Is basically is is Krejci the best two-way player, or is Ovechkin the worst two-way player? Basically, Ovechkin has a league-leading 48 goals. So does this mean Ovechkin is the worst defensive player in the league? Because because it's never it's a measuring two-way. So if he's great offensively, but his plus-minus is the worst, that would, <clears throat> that would mean by plus-minus logic that he's the worst of defensive player in the league. But how accurate is this? Yeah, now I'm gonna go over some basic basic uh, problems with the plus minus, and I'll, I'll show this soon with NHL.com's uh, basic plus minus stats leaders. And uh, basically, before I get to that, I just wanna point these out. Basically, players with lots of power play points tend to have lower plus minus because they aren't counted. So majority of the time that they're playing, uh, especially offensively, they're on the power play. So then they're not going to be counted as high. And also basically assumes that goals against and goals for while on the ice have the exact same weight. So this in part basically ignores level of goaltending. And this ties in with the next point, which is plus minus depends highly on how good your team is. Basically the better team, the better your plus minus is. So basically it's an individual stat, but highly dependent on your team, which is a big flaw. And also players that play the most minutes are affected more drastically with how good your team is than teammates who play less. This is simply because if you're playing more and if you're on a good team, more goals are scored. Yeah, basically your team is good, but if your team is bad, more goals are scored against. So if you're playing a majority of the minutes of your team, you're going to get more affected either negatively or positively. And also another interesting stat, it depends on how much you play on the penalty kill. If on a bad team and play on a penalty kill, your plus minus would be higher than your teammates. And this is basically because you are playing less in situations where goals against lower your plus minus. But if you're on a good team and play a lot on the penalty kill, your plus minus would be lower than your teammates because you're playing less in situations where goals basically increase your plus minus. Yeah, the goals for that your team scores, so it's less opportunities to get increasing your plus minus because you're on a penalty uh, kill more often. Right, so here if you go to NHL.com and click on basically stats, uh, individuals, and you click on this plus minus little icon here, you can basically have a list of everyone here, their plus minus, uh, etc. As you can see, David Krejci's first and plus minus of 37, uh, plus 37. As you can see, actually, all top three are just Boston right here. And then if you go basically the go last, see who's last, you're going to see Ovechkin right here. But basically, so this is saying he's the worst defensive, another one's the best, but this is wholly wrong. But if you look at what I was pointing at, players that are on the power play more are basically uh, have lower plus minus. Yeah, and you could basically double check this by there has a uh, basically team's goals for and team's uh, power play goals for. So if you click here, this is a good indication of how much you play in the power play or how good your power play team is. As you can see, 
team power play goals for Ovechkin has the highest, so he's on the ice for more power play goals than anybody. And Crosby there is second. So basically, yeah, even though Crosby has 129 goals for, yeah, a lot of these are on the power play. So then his plus minus is end up 15, which is a lot less than David Krejci's 37. Yeah, even though this 129 goals for by Crosby is the highest in the league. Yeah, basically, and another point I was trying to make is basically the better your team, the higher the plus minus. As you can see, Boston is first right now. Well, Pittsburgh is fifth, St. Louis is second. And when you go to compare to uh, Washington uh, Capitals, which is a Vetchkin team, that's 18th. So as you can see there, uh, number one, Boston. And again, they have the number one plus minus. But in fact, when you go look at basically Boston's team only, this is all Boston, they have only two players that are, are minus because basically their team is amazing, so they're always scoring goals, so they have a higher plus minus. So as you can see, two guys have a minus, and they've only played, this guy's played nine games, 22 games, as opposed to 75 for David Krejci. So basically the more games you play, the, the odds are you're going to get more plus minus when you're on a good team and basically get to get back to this point basically players that play the most minutes are affected more drastically yeah so basically david crunchy plays a lot of uh, the minutes for, for this team and that's why again his plus minus is higher and also he plays very little on the penalty kills you go to team power play goals against he has a two uh, compared to if you go to the highest one which is uh Zdeno Chara, which is probably one of the best, the, the, one of the best defensemen in the league, his plus minus is only 25 because he's on the power. I mean, uh, he's on the penalty kill way more often. So when you go to David Krejci, he plays a lot, as you can see. That is plus 37, and this guy Dougie Hamilton plays a lot less, even 57 games, but he's plus 23 because he doesn't play in the penalty kill much. He only has one goal against as opposed to 72 games played by Chara, but he has a plus 25. So plus 23, plus 25, and it's highly dependent on this penalty kill aspect. And again, when you look at, if you go to teams and then just sort everything by plus minus, as you can see, Boston's the highest, plus minus, plus 56. And then Washington, which has a veteran as the worst, is a minus two. So they're 24th overall. So they just get scored on a lot. So that this tells about goaltending and overall team defense. Yeah, now when you basically sort the plus minus by Washington Capitals team, as you can see here, what I was saying, if you're in a penalty kill a lot more, even on this bad team, he has a plus minus of minus four. This is uh, John Carlson. And he, because he has, he's on power play a lot. And you see this by his 33 goals against. But then when you go back to Ovechkin, which is he never plays on the, on the penalty kill, I mean. So this is a penalty kill. Uh, he never plays the penalty kill. He has basically a minus 34 because he's on the ice more often and getting scored on even strength. Even though when you look at team goals against 91 versus a 75. So there's more goals scored against John Carlson. But the thing is he's on a penalty kill a lot more. So he's less on 5-on-5. Five even though his team is getting scored on more. So as you can see, the lower you go, the, the higher the plus minus usually is. Even Marcus Johansson, negative 22. He's on the power play a lot. I mean, on the penalty kill a lot less. But he's on the power play uh, yeah, basically a lot as well. And, and that also yeah, lowers his uh, plus minus because he's not on even strength goals a lot. And now I want to just show basically this I made this little table with uh, the top and bottom uh, plus minus of Etchkin and Krejci. And also put Crosby in there, which is just a bit higher up there. Because also he's considered a really good defensive and offensive player. Let's just show the difference between the worst and then someone that's considered good, basically. Ovechkin, uh, as you can see here, their team rank is 1 18th. And as you can see, the highest uh, has a higher plus minus, plus 37, goes to plus 15, and all of a sudden minus 34. Even though Ovechkin has more team goals for... But as you can see, team goals against with Krejci is 36, which is a lot less because they don't get scored on Boston. Uh, they're just too good. And as you can see, th this is pretty, the most interesting one is uh, over here. Crosby has 63 goals against, only two on the power. I mean, on the penalty kill. So this this wouldn't be counted towards, as opposed to Vetchin 75. So the difference between this and these two is only 14. So basically. The more interesting stat I got to show is Alex Ovechkin has been on the ice for even strength goals against only 14 times more than Crosby, yet is basically if you subtract these two, 
negative 49 uh, plus minus, or basically negative 49 relative to cross these plus 15. Even though on even strength, uh, it basically had been scored only 14 times more. So that's, but then when you count uh, penalty kills as well, this is just 12 times. So 12 times less. Yeah, overall, but yet a minus 49 relative to Crosby's 15, which is just r absurd. Yeah, so basically it greatly exaggerates the significance of basically what it's trying to do, which is say if someone's good offense and defensive player. Yeah, now basically to go over some conclusions from this analysis that I did, basically the NHL should simply remove it because it means very little and affected by too many factors. Basically, the better the team, the better the plus minus usually is, which shouldn't be the case for individual stats. Well, that much shouldn't be that big of a factor. And also players that are most effective negatively are players that play a lot on the power play and very little on the penalty kill and are the primary goal scorer. Uh, so then draw this out. Basically, if you're the one on whatever line you are that is required to score goals, if you don't score goals, your plus minus is not going to increase. Uh, so basically, you're reliant on yourself as opposed to your teammates. And also that ties in with on a bad team. And Alex Ovechkin, despite a league best 48 goals, fits his category and has a league worst minus 34. Also, like that stat I showed, basically Ovechkin have, is which is considered a bad defensive player, has been on the ice and even strength goals against only 14 times more than Crosby, which is considered a good defensive player, yet is um, basically, yeah, yet Crosby is a plus uh, 49 above Ovechkin. So 14 goals against when your team is 18th as opposed to 5th, but plus, but then Crosby is plus 49 above, which is just absurd. So basically, and also players that are most effective positively are players that play a lot of minutes and very little on the penalty kill and on a very good team. And basically, that's just David Krejci right there, happens to match these categories perfectly. And also, well, that's all for today. Actually, I'm going to go over these. Uh, Late and in later videos, uh, some more NHL bad stats, which is points. Basically, why should a goal, a first assist, and a second assist be combined into one, into one stat? Basically, why are assists not subjective? Meaning, the puck hitting a player three minutes before hitting someone else, before someone else in your team scores a goal as an assist. That, that doesn't just make any sense. And also, points and standings and overtime losses worth one point which is just a, doesn't make sense because in this case can happen a team with 50 wins and 30 well regulation losses is the same as a team with 20 wins and 60 overtime losses which is they both have 100 points if you combine this well it's just ridiculous so I might do videos on these later uh, well, anyways it's all for today hopefully you learned and uh, you could also download these exact notes in the link below as well as that excel sheet that I had and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution